I think you can hear me, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, nice to meet you, everyone. Uh, I am Emrosko from HIS Travel, uh, and uh, I'm today's moderator. Uh, let me introduce you or partic participants first, if you like. Uh, ladies first, Ms. Tara Kapel, the founder of For the Love Travel, FTLO, solo traveler targeting new generation travel agency. Can you please describe your agency in just one sentence? How you describe it? We're a modern group tour operator for people in their 20s and 30s, and we just launched our sub-brand Sojourn, which is a, a modern uh, study abroad program for young professionals. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, Mr. Wolf. Hello, nice are we back? Here. Yes, Mr. Wolf, are you there? Can you hear us? Hello, Hello Mr. Wolf, you can hear us? Okay, uh, Mr. Wolf has some difficulties to hear us, I think. Let me uh, go to Mr. Hans first. Hello, hello. Hello, Mr. Wolf, we can hear you. you can you hear us? Oh, we, we can hear you, Mr. Wolf. Anyway, uh, let me go to Mr. Hans, then we can go back to Mr. Wolf, if you like. Hans is the founder of Albatross Travel. Uh, uh, not the founder, not the founder, fortunately, uh, unfortunately. Okay. CEO, <laughs> uh, director of uh, Albus to Travel, uh, Safari Atlantic Cruise and Marathon Oriented Travel Agency, and also cruise company owner. Is it right? Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, then uh, Mr. Ren Prey is with us, the CEO of Upper Publications Group and the director of Rough Guides, Tailor Made Trips Advertising Travel Agency. Mr. Yes, Renner, hello, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, welcome everyone. So if you like, uh, let me have the introduction and uh, start like uh, the topic of this uh, webinar is new generation uh, travelers. So when they say new generation traveler, most of us concentrate on the young generation and uh, try to understand the needs of them. But from my point of view, uh, new generation does not mean just young people's choices, but also means a new stage in development of a product and also technology progress too. So new stage brings change to every related segments of the market in terms of product and technology. As a conclusion, when we are talking about the new generation travelers, we need to talk about not just young travelers, but also other segments of the travelers like families, Silver Age, and others. Hello. Hello, Wolf. <laughs> Joe, can you hear us? Mr. Wolf. <laughs> OK. So in the same time, uh, we are all talking about the digital transformation. But how about product tr transformation? In this webinar, my questions will be about what new generational developments bring to the uh, travel products. So uh, until we connect to Mr. Wolf, uh, first I would like to start with Ms. Tara. In tourism to identify customers and to make the analysis of their needs, well, it is necessary to separate the customers into segments categories to groups uh, to reveal their characteristics and their uh, expectations. As we know, FLT, F FTLO is working very actively on this. So what are FTLO doing exactly? Um, thank you, Emre. Um, well, when we think about travel, there's so many different reasons that people go places, right? They have different motivations. And so there's a lot of different niches that you can cater to when you're trying to speak to a travel customer. Um, what FTLO did was we found this really specific um, market, which was people in their 20s and 30s who were mostly solo travelers who really wanted a social experience as much as um, an amazing trip. And we just designed the entire brand around speaking to them. Um, and so that when they found us, they really felt heard and they felt like we understood what they were looking for. Um, so I would say that there, there are so many niches, there are so many interests um, to cater to in the travel industry and really honing in on a particular customer and just designing everything with their needs in mind um, is a great way to, to sort of 
hone in on that. Yep. Well, in, from your webpage, what I understood was uh, you also concentrate on solo travelers, right? We do. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would say 85% of the travelers that come with us come alone. How do you reach to your target segment, solo travelers? So we actually, for the first three years, we're a five-year-old company. For the first three years, we didn't do any advertising. Um, and I think that was largely because we had great word of mouth from people who found us and and really identified with the product that we are offering. And so they told other people like them um, that they they had finally found a company that was really catering to their needs. Um, now we use a, a bunch of different ways to reach our uh, target. Instagram has been really um, functional for us. Um, we also have great SEO um, for long-term keywords. So what the, the specific interest that people are looking for, um, they can find our website through that as well. Mm -hmm. But also, I think it's not an easy job to make them happy because you arrange them a partner to share the room too, right? We do. Mm -hmm. right. So please explain us about your customer care services too, because you know it's not easy to convince the people to have a partner which you don't know and it, that, that sometimes <laughs> had some troubles, right? Um, so when people first find our website, the first step to interacting with us is to fill out a profile. And that's about a 20 question survey. And they tell us about their travel preferences, um, what they're looking for. And so we use those profiles to match people uh, for roommates. But if someone wants their own room, they can definitely pay a single supplement and get their own room. Um, but for the most part, people are really happy with their roommates and they become friends. But you have expertise on matching the people. And can we say that this is a new generation model uh, as a product? Because at least if there is no uh, social media and uh, no this kind of uh, sharing services, it's not easy to convince the people to match each other. And you know, the problems will, should be much bigger, uh, let's say 10 years before. But uh, in this generation, it's quite easier maybe. Um, I think that because our travelers are, are solo and they're actually looking for connection, they're looking to meet people. And as long as they trust the brand to be introducing them to people that they think that they'll get along with, I don't, um, I don't think it's a huge issue. I actually think people, sometimes people are even excited to have roommates um, because it's someone that you can immediately hang out with when you're traveling. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, so Mr. Wolf is not with us yet. I will continue with, uh, uh, Hans, uh, nice to meet you again. Hi. Uh, we met uh, in it was April, right? Correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, how is life? How is going? Uh, your new ship is on uh, already sailing. No, no, the new ship uh, will be finished in March, and, um, March. and, and may, maybe to add a little bit to to Tara's story. Uh, so, <laughs> the, our ships they are they're small. They're small luxury expedition vessels, 185 passengers, and uh, we, we thought uh, to do something really uh, innovative, uh, and that is to develop on the new ship five dedicated solo uh, uh, travel uh, um, uh, rooms, small, but, but you know, with, a, of course, a private bed, private bathroom, nice little seating area. Um, uh, uh, and, and we thought that was innovative to have an, a, a solo cabin without the, the single supplements that you usually pay. And guess what? For for next year, they are all sold out completely. First first cabin category to, to sell out. So in our second new build that we um, hope to uh, receive in in 2022, we will have 13 of those uh, rooms. Very nice, very nice. So good so, opportunity for Tara to sell your products. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Solo travel is definitely a, a, a big trend. Yeah. What, so, what, uh, what other segments do you have? Uh, 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 exactly uh, specified, like solo travels is there, and what are uh, the other uh, segments are uh, preferring your uh, products? Yeah, it, 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 it's hard to say uh, this is the typically dem uh, demographics. Um, we sell completely experienced products, yes. and uh, they, they go at an, a, a pretty uh, um, high price tag, uh, I have to say. Um, so uh, you, you usually are, are targeting an, an, a slightly older uh, demographics, 
but in general it's people that love experiences that love nature that love wildlife that like to be uh, you know away from uh, from the daily busy hotspots in life are these more uh, individuals or uh, some groups too yeah well, we, we, we get groups we get uh, we get multi generation families uh, it, it's it's truly very varied uh, also from a demographic perspective uh, we are we are a danish company but we sell globally uh, it's a uh, chinese japanese singaporean australians americans english germans uh, scandinavians it's 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 a very broad audience that we have we call ourselves a little bit the united nations on at sea Oh, I see. Very nice. I, I'm happy to hear that you have also Japanese clients. You know, uh, we are in the Japanese market and struggling a lot, but we have a, uh, we see a good opportunity for them to go to Scandinavia, ex especially, and they are looking for expeditions, uh, many new products we need in Japan. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Bob, are you with us? Can you hear us? Now I am. Oh, perfect. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear. Perfect. Exactly. Very nice. I am very sorry. I have made uh, a mistake myself. So nobody to blame but myself. No, no, no. Okay, no problem. Uh, so let's continue with you, Mr. Wolf. How uh, uh, actually uh, nice to meet you again. And uh, my pleasure. Uh, you have very loyal customers in our last um, uh, webinar. You said that seventy percent of your uh, customers are repeaters, right? Uh, close mistaken. to close to 60 some percent yes yeah, we have a lot of repeat customers and they are really the foundation of our continued success so it's very nice to uh, ask you uh, you know uh, your you are loyal customers using your company years and uh, now we are in a new generation and the products are changing. So what did changed last uh, 20 years in terms of the product? A lot has changed in the past uh, 20 years. I'd say primarily in the past 10 years. The product became more experiential and we operate on uh, three main pillars. One of them being the release, meaning that we take care of everything for our guest. The other one being the real connection, because what we know is that our guests want to experience authentic connections with local people, with local uh, culture, with local environment. And it goes in different directions. And also what we have noticed is that our guests want to make their travel matter. So they want to be to an extent involved in the experiences and in the life of local people. So what we have created is called a Be My Guest experience where we uh, go deliberately to the non-hospitality industry people, farms, cooperatives, vineyards, and we expose our guests to those experiences. And just to give you an idea, in Jordan, we go to a women's cooperative called Iraq El Amir, uh, where the local women produce and preserve the tradition of old, our old arts and crafts. In Anadolia, we go to another women's cooperative that again, preserve the local cuisine, typically Anadolian, host our guests and whatnot. In Peru, we go to a cooperative that is involved in weaving and the production of traditional Peruvian uh, carpets and, 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 and other items that are very, very traditional. And what we have also noticed is that the guest wants to know what is their contribution to the local economy, that they have a direct access to helping local economy and also understanding what kind of a footprint we leave as visitors. I see. Yeah, that's very important. And how do you think, you know, your, uh, you had mainly group tours uh, last 20 years, but now everybody's uh, talking about the uh, individual tours will be more popular but uh, from my point of view uh, there are different things and uh, group tours will be there as far as you provide the right product how do you think about this change uh, well maybe you push mute again we cannot hear you mm. but, 
Okay, again, we cannot hear you. Sorry, sorry, Wolf. We we cannot we cannot hear you. Okay, let me let me continue with uh, Rene, and then maybe we come back to Wolf. Uh, hi, Rene. How are you? Hello, I'm very fine. How are you? Fine, fine. Uh, where are you right now? I'm in Warsaw, in Poland. Poland. Okay, so I am in Turkey. Wolf is in uh, Canada. Hans is in Denmark. Correct. And Tara is in... I'm actually uh, in Sweden right now. Sweden. Oh, very... That's very, next door. Uh, yeah. Very, yeah. <laughs> very international <laughs> webinar. So, Rene, uh, you know, I, what I want to ask you as a media person, my company, HIS, is now investing a lot in uh, online travel products. Uh, virtual uh, travel products. From my side, there will be limited uh, interest to this business, but uh, may remain as a content which the people may watch before they decide to this, uh, destinations. Uh, Rene, as a media professional, how do you think about the future of the virtual travel products? Well, I personally want to get out and see it real. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm missing kind of planes now. I've been a frequent flyer in a very high status and, you know, it's all gone. So uh, I think that uh, from a personal point of view, to all the people I speak to is the next couple of years is people want to get out and see the real thing, right? Yeah. So if you had your product ready uh, in February, March, that was your year, right? But I strongly hope, nothing against your business, but I strongly hope that people have a large uh, appetite for getting out there and seeing the real stuff. Me too. Me too. Maybe it, it now, may of, remain as a content, right? <laughs> yeah, of course, there is a role for uh, virtual content. And, and we also did something around that with the rough guides to the Xbox. Uh, very, very special, very special product. Uh, it's just creating appetite, yeah, and that's that's the that's the purpose of of uh, virtual content, right? Be it real real virtual uh, landscapes, or like the fantasy worlds from the the Microsoft Xbox world, right? Mm -hmm. I think that uh, we should never forget that you know people want to get out, and if this is going to be true, uh, if it was ever true, then it will be more true next year, yeah. I I, I think everybody, you know. Mm -hmm. We got enough. Maybe, we want to get out there. Maybe it may encourage the people to travel again and choose uh, where to travel. But also, Lorraine, I would like to ask you, what are the most effective promotion in this new generation world? Give us some clue about how to make effective promotions. Mm. <laughs> well, work with rough guides. It's quite simple, right? I think you, you have to find media partners that really have uh, an outstanding mm. uh, audience. Uh, and that are very effective in promoting um, special products, niche products to, to the audience that really perceives it, right? That, that's the traditional role of media. So it's all about creating a really good, really good media plan. But I think that the change that we will see is you're going to be less and less successful with CPC campaigns, with um, advertising campaigns, if you think you've got to be able to create more really uh, outstanding content, right? Uh, really, really good content that uh, encourages people. Uh, you will have to use uh, tools on social media, Insta stories, uh, TikTok stories, wh whatever you can do, right, to reach younger audiences. Uh, I think uh, just the pure media buying is not going to do enough anymore. I see. How about the rough guides? Now, uh, you, uh, as far as I check your web page, uh, I see an enquête is, uh, which is asking about the needs of the client. And then I think uh, on the back end, you have some uh, consultancy and helping, camp, helping the people to have the right product for themselves. How it works? How many planning staff you have, for example? Because you, you should have a huge operational team behind to make those tailor-made programs one by one. Yeah, we had until March, we had, but <laughs> you will have again. You know, we, don't talk about we will have again, yes, exactly. We don't talk about it. 
I kind of expected that question. So if Tara is a little bit in the dating business for solo travelers, we're a little bit in a different dating business for uh, uh, families and couples uh, is our target group uh, to connect these uh, families and uh, couples to local experts. We do not do the planning ourselves, but we do connect the, the target group to uh, local tour operators in every destination. So we're still about 70 something destinations. We have live globally. So actually, yes, there is a large expertise available to our network, but it's not our staff because the role of rough guides in this business model is connecting users to real people at the other end of the world that will help you planning the trip. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Wolf is with us, I think. It seems to be working this time. Okay, very nice. I was asking you about the group tours and individual sure. tours. Is it shifting the to the um, basic uh, product? Is shifting to the individuals or groups are still there? There are two ways we are addressing the uh, different needs in in the group travel uh, segment. Uh, first of all, uh, we have realized that uh, our guests still want to travel in a group, but different size group. So we have created or we are facilitating two different streams in group travel. We can create groups as small as 12, so small bubble group travel, uh, where the cost goes uh, a bit higher, but you keep your original group of minimum 12 people, it can be 12, 16, 2024. Uh, on our traditional product side, which is displayed on the web pages, we have also selected particular departures that are very popular and created small group travel that has up to 29 travelers traveling together. So that is one of the way of addressing because really Trafalgar uh, traditional guests, they really enjoy the social aspect of traveling with the group and we do not want to lose that important uh, brand pillar. On the other hand, because we do have different brands in our portfolio, what was very important to me and my team in Canada was to bring an FIT tour operator, our brand and vacations brand, and Brendan specializes in individual travel to uh, Scotland and to Ireland. So if it wears a kilt, it is Brendan. We can provide uh, a self-drive, Lux self-drive, private chauffeured and train tours of Ireland and Scotland. So there is not a single answer, but I believe that group travel is here to stay we need to address the concerns re relative to the physical distancing. Therefore, we have addressed it through our very stringent well-being protocols. And uh, interestingly enough, we are the only tour operator who has added one more person to the team on the road. We have added a well-being director. So in addition to the travel director, who is ensuring that all of the needs of the clients in terms of experiences, in terms of enjoying themselves, having good life on Trafalgar uh, experience. We have a well-being director who is ensuring that at every step of the way, because we deal with multiple suppliers, the standards of physical distancing, of sanitation, of the way that uh, either food or drinks are presented, individually packaged and whatnot, all that is ensured. So down the road, I really think that we are offering something that to a traveler really uh, removes all of the logistical issues that they may encounter when traveling. So it's really, I believe that traveling in groups, be it small or be it kind of regular size down the road, is still going to remain very, very attractive to many of our travelers because the worries are out of there, as we say, release, real connections, resulting in real joy. Yeah, you're right. So at the end of the day, customer satisfaction is the key. Absolutely. So, uh, because of the change in the technology and the social environment, uh, consultancy is getting more important than ever. To survive in this generation, we need to uh, segmentate and categorize the products as you are uh, talking from the different categories and uh, uh, 
getting the best know-how you have and providing the best things to the client depending on the needs uh, we should concentrate the ones which we really have the product knowledge before you know there was product art based companies they were purchasing everything and selling everything now uh, we need to market in and check for what we really know and what we can really pro uh, do for our clients we should uh, give them the right answers uh, the right product uh, for their uh, satisfaction uh, as we all know uh, travel industry have millions of products and so many categories for different segments so it's impossible for us to provide everything uh, as uh, we did uh, many years before now we should know our market very well and provide the right products as i said before so consultancy is getting much more important day by day my question will be to all uh, one by one uh, what are the travel agencies should do more to keep uh, customer satisfaction high in this generation uh, mr hans can we start with you yeah, a good question, and there's so many answers actually to that. But I want to refer to um, an, an, a discussion that I had last week with an, uh, uh, well, it was not a travel agent, but a tour operator, uh, partly private equity owned. Um, so they, they reduced their staff by half, like I think a, a lot of us have done. So, so far, nothing wrong. And their strategy is to concentrate, uh, to, to, they have cut down the, the number of trips that they're offering to the top 50 best sellers before Corona. Very analytical. And, and they asked me what I thought about it. And I said, well, I think it's totally wrong. For the simple reason, your top 50 trips before Corona will not be your top 50 trips after Corona. Uh, and, uh, and, and I think one of the trends, and that was already before Corona, was over tourism, over tourism, so uh, staying away from major hotspots simply because of, of the impact on Mother Earth or on the surroundings. Now, uh, people will ask themselves, why should I lock myself up in, 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 in a mass audience in, in, in heavy touristic hotspots? Uh, so there's also a more personal interest to, to remove yourself from those areas. And, and where we as Albatross really strongly believe in is in, in the remote areas. Uh, we have put our bets for the next years on Greenland. It's, uh, um, uh, uh, as I said, it's remote, but comfortable. Uh, you can create a wonderful, unforgettable experience in it, uh, away from the crowds, away from over tourism. So back to your questions. Um, th there's not a single single answer, but please let everyone always challenge the past. The, the past is not a an, an, an guideline for success in the, in the future. You have to innovate, you have to uh, uh, think ahead. And what we think is that the, 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 uh, the future trend is experiences. Um, it's also said by Wolf and uh, remote, remoteness, uh, away from the hotspot. You are uh, investing in the assets to make your clients uh, happier and uh, building a new ship, which is should be very costly. So yeah. it means that we need uh, to make new things, even we create new things uh, for uh, having the right products in our hands. And it's going to make the our uh, customer segment uh, happier. Okay. Uh, how about Rene? Uh, how is your... Uh, rough guides working on this to make your clients happier because it is it is risky right uh, you connect your client with the uh, dmcs in the destination directly and they talk to each other directly happy clients is never risky <laughs> i don't know I mean, I mean i mean of course uh, I, I was coming there you should be taking care of those dmcs very well and choosing the best ones which are possible and the educational should be there also. So how you uh, control those DMCs to be good serving to your clients? Well, uh, I think that that's the recommendation that, that I'd like to give to every uh, travel agency, right? You, you gotta be a companion all along the user journey of your clients. Right? Uh, so you have to be able to control the, the user journey you know? and we can do it from inspiration to 
uh, to feedback after the trip. Uh, and, and that's really important. So you can have a, a really outstanding product. Uh, and if you're asking about the DMCs, <clears throat> yeah, of course, that is a large uh, exercise to select uh, DMCs. We have a, a bit of a process set up for uh, accreditation and credit checks and policy checks and so on and quality checks. Uh, to onboard DMC and obviously this is what we are monitoring through customer feedback very very tight right that's uh, uh, Our success depends on the quality of the DMCs But the clients are actually coming back to us because they understand the value that we provide Yeah, We provide the value if you want to travel next year to I want to travel to Vietnam since many years on my list uh, But the year after I'm, I'm rather looking at Argentina or Chile, right? And so where do I find the partner that really provides me the same kind of standard qu top quality service uh, in every destination while still being able to uh, connect with local people, support local tourism, uh, support female-led uh, um, businesses uh, and have this quality in on travel, right? So uh, I, you can research DMCs, you can find DMCs, but because I will travel to Vietnam next year, hopefully, uh, and will work with a wonderful DMC, it will be rough guides who enabled this for me, and I'm not going to do on my own a research to find another DMC for Argentina, because there's many problems uh, connected with, with doing that. So my answer is quite, uh, quite simple, right? You have to be uh, able to control the whole user journey. Uh, and I think the, the other the, um, uh, thing that I'd like to mention for, to this question is uh, we do only uh, we do only personalized thing and dynamic, right? We don't have group tours, we don't have pre-prepared trips, we don't have like the 50 best trips because every trip is the best because it's tailored to your to you as a client personally. So there is not a top list of trips uh, that we can uh, analyze. And that's kind of what, what we strongly believe that these are the trends for the coming years, yeah? Individualization, personalization, flexibility, uh, and supporting local communities, businesses, and, and women. Thank you very much. Tara, how about your company? How, how you do you approach the customer satisfaction, uh, customer journey? Um, I agree with Renee. I think it comes down to communication and trust. I mean, planning a good trip takes time. Planning a great trip takes time and expertise. So if um, your clients can come to you time after time, being able to trust your quality standards and your local knowledge and, um, and your values, I think are especially important. Um, then I think that's, that's why they do return time after time to take a trip with you. Um, and I think especially as we go into this new age of travel, people are really looking for bucket list trips. They're looking for trips that are more off the beaten path, um, remote, like Hans spoke to. And those are more difficult to plan. So I, I really think that people are going to fully understand the value of having a trusted partner to take them on these amazing journeys. Um, just because, you know, if you're, if you're going to Antarctica or you're going to, you know, hike Kilimanjaro, you, you're probably only going to do that once in your life and you want to make sure that you do it right that time. And so you want a brand that you can trust to take you on that journey. Very well. So, uh, we can say that uh, we are travel professionals and we know what we are selling and we create really good products for our client needs and we understand we listen to our clients very well and uh, trying to find them uh, the best thing uh, best holiday they can experience because time is uh, priceless uh, especially in these days we understand how important it is so uh, leslie actually uh, i don't know why it, it, uh, i was expecting uh, the answers will be more longer but uh my last question uh is going to be uh, which just uh, you know i'm, I'm uh, digital tr transformation is important for the efficiency for uh getting more market etc but product transform formation is more important getting more important uh, after especially uh, these days 
so the product is answered. Uh, the best selling 50 products will not be the same uh, after uh, the uh, pandemic period. Which products do you believe exactly will be uh, in the best selling uh, in the market? What, uh, it can be destination or description of the products. Plus, which markets? Uh, I, I, I was not expecting to talk about uh, pandemic period, but we should know uh, it uh, much better to understand uh, which destinations may cover faster and which segmentations will be covering the fastest uh, from po your point of view, Mr. Wolf. I would like to reflect a little bit on the previous question. Uh, if you don't mind, Emre, I agree with all of the speakers and I have kind of t taken out some of their pieces. I think that Hans is very uh, right in asserting that looking at historical data doesn't help us a lot right now. Uh, because uh, we are really not looking into restoring what was the old normal. We are facing a new normal down the road. And for that reason, it is important to continuously communicate with your guest. As you've mentioned, we do have a large database of past guests and we're constantly reaching out to them with relevant content and we are surveying them and researching what are their thoughts on where do they want to travel. And there are several things that we realize. First of all, uh, our guests are looking for a more meaningful travel. They're spending a lot more time planning, and that's where sources such as Rough Guide and, and other inspiring uh, and, and, and uh, supportive media can help. Uh, then they like to travel longer. Out of Canada, pre-COVID, an average Trafalgar traveler would look for an 11-day duration product. Now, based on our surveys, our same guest or same database is looking for 14 day. So they're already looking, and I'm referring now to Canadian market and North American travel sentiment, they're looking for a longer product. Um, again, what Hans said, uh, off the beaten track, destinations certainly are very interesting because uh, people are still a little bit hesitant to go to the high density, high, uh, high, high, uh, highly visited attractions because they fear that they may not be able to sustain their, their, their protocols. So uh, certainly destinations such as uh, Iceland that had lower low incidence, Greenland that Albatross is doing, and 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 uh, more remote places will be very very interesting. Um, in terms of how does the product change to go to your other question again relative to the surveys and relative to the research we are doing i can tell you for canadians according to the latest survey conducted by one of our trade media uh, 67 percent canadians are ready to travel as soon as it's safe to travel however 53 say that in 21 they will travel domestically so clearly as an international company, and now I'll speak on behalf of Trafalgar and, and cost saver to, a, to an extent, uh, we need to ensure that our domestic experiences are relevant to the domestic traveler. Being an international company, we uh, create experiences that are more common rated for international traveler this time in Canada, we have prepared a portfolio of three programs that were designed by Canadians for Canadians, so are offering a bit deeper, more meaningful experience of the domestic travel. And speaking of further, uh, further growth or restoration of travel to the new normalcy, I believe it will go in some sort of concentric circles. It will start with domestic travel because the local regulations are reasonably similar, although even between the provinces in Canada, uh, different, different uh, regulations happen, but we're working to somehow make them common depending on when it is safe to do so. Then the next level will be traveling through safe corridors to a particular destination that has proven that they have low incidence of COVID, that they have uh, rapid testing, that they have uh, excellent well-being protocols, say for 
for instance, a corridor between Canada, Ireland, I can foresee things that will happen probably sometime in the spring or early summer. So to go to go back to, to, to your uh, kind of digital transformation and product transformation, they go hand in hand. The main difference now is that we need to be involved in a dialogue with the guest, with the customer, a lot more than before. We cannot assume that what has historically been popular, super attractive, and whatnot will remain that. And we also have to allow for the fact that people have a lot more time to plan their trip. They are receiving inspirational pieces through, through digital media. They're spending a lot more time reading about the destinations and their knowledge and their desire, again, to have more profound experiences is certainly determining how we, how we put together and how we adjust our product. Thank you very much, Mr. Wolf. And I just had uh, in the chat box, it's written, uh, one of uh, the guests is, uh, wrote that 73% of uh, China's domestic market is recovered. So uh, even in China now, 73% is recovered uh, domestically and in the other part of the world, it seems that domestic will recover faster. But I would like to know more about this, uh, the uh, content of the product, if you don't mind, Mr. Hans. What kind of uh, products do, for example, you have safaris, you have marathons, and uh, what, what is, will there be any change in the, the content of the products uh, from your side? Well, I, I, I would say we further evolve products and, uh, if, if you think about experience and and uh, the, the, the people uh, in, in the last year, if they went out, they, they, they really connected with nature. Uh, uh, more people have gone on a domestic camping trip, etc. So uh, two new uh, 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 excursions that we will offer is, for example, one of them is camping in Antarctica all night. Then you will be back in the in the comfort of your wonderful uh, uh, luxury ship, but camping in 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 a, a BV bag, not even in in a tent, laying in the snow, you will be warm, uh, uh, but uh, an unforgettable experience. So so that is one of the, um, the the new products that we developed, and and we developed the same in in Greenland, where we will camp a night on the Greenlandic ice cap. So. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's where we are looking at it. It's an interesting balance between um, extreme experiences, as we say, but still in comfort or uh, only for one night and then returning in the comfort of your uh, luxury boutique hotel or, or um, a cruise ship. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Rene, how, how about your company? What kind of products are you preparing for the new generation, the new product? Well, you're raising the third question now, and I have I want to answer your first. I think your first question okay. was what, what, pro, what product do you think will be uh, growing fast next year? Yes, and please. I think it's definitely not the traditional uh, prepackaged product, right? Because I feel there's a little bit of a contradiction between off the beaten track, but traveling in a group of 30 and, you know, going through that, that seems to me a little bit contradictory. I strongly believe that tailor-made travel will be uh, growing much, much faster than, than any other segment because it's personalized, uh, it's hassle-free and safe, right? You've got a companion all along the way, uh, especially it's also uh, responsible, right? You, you, we are taking care about responsible travel. We have our guidelines. We're looking for sustainability. We're trying to uh, work with partners that know what sustainability means. We also put a very uh, strong pro point on um, working with female-led businesses. And I think the overall product, it has to be very dynamic, right? There is not one single product that is going to sell, but it's much more the process of creating the product is going to be uh, important and the, the, the ethics behind that, right? The ethics behind what kind of products are offered, how are they delivered, how sustainable and responsible they are. 
So this is what, what we really strongly believe on and we're very confident about that. Well, Mr. Wolf, uh, 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 Tara, I will ask you the same question, but before that, uh, tailor-made products and pre-packages, uh, they, they, they seem to be two different things, but pre-packages also needs very high consultancy behind. So how do you think about this uh, tailor-made versus pre-packages? Uh, how can we uh, differentiate both uh, products? Okay, okay, I thought that I was going to leave Tara to answer first. Uh, I, I but I, the, oh, I thought that was for, was that for me or for Mr. Wolf? Uh, actually, uh, uh, Mr. Wolf has uh, okay. three, uh, packages which sure. are uh, for 30 years, long time. So what do you think about this tailor-made and pre-package issue? I will well, come to Tara. Uh, it's, it is kind of a little bit of a nomenclature of uh, how do we regard uh, how we put together a product. I would, uh, I would question that tailor-made for an individual is not necessarily much different from tailor-made for a small group of people or a group of people. So it is, um, it is really important to be sensitive to uh, what are the trends it is important to be sensitive to make travel matter. I fully agree uh, that sustainability and uh, and returning and giving back to the community, to the host community, is exceptionally important. Um, in our world, in the past 10 years, we have created a uh, sustainability foundation called TreadRight. And TreadRight uh, is basically in the background of all of our initiatives uh, that are giving back to the community or involving the community or uh, being uh, busy with uh, different initiatives. We currently have over 50 initiatives globally of preserving clean water, cleaning oceans, uh, ensuring that the single-use plastic, which is often uh, connected with tourism, is minimized in the cases of our companies. So uh certainly uh, there are uh, there are very many similarities between what we can deliver to an individual and what we can deliver to a group as i've mentioned before a uh, small group trend is clearly on the grow as people believe more so because of covid situation that they are feeling a bit safer when traveling with people who they know from before. I have a reason to support this statement because when I look at our bookings for 2021, our group bookings are actually doing phenomenally well. We still have a bit more struggle uh, in, 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 in uh, 21 bookings with individual bookings because of many different things such as quarantine rules, uh, crossing the border rules, and all those things. Um, so yes, it is, it is possible to deliver practically the same experience to one person or to more people. The way we tailor make our, our programs are following. We understand that now in dialogue with our customers, our customers want to be more active than before. So we are now doing a lot more hiking and, and experiences where a couple or a few people together from the larger group want to spend time doing their own thing. Then in every place, in every destination where we spend two or three days uh, and where we would op offer optional experiences, we always now offer a choice. Traditionally, on a guided vacation tour like ours, you would say arrive to Rome and you would have a choice of uh, having the dinner with say some musical content one night and the other day you would have either a museum or some sort of a, a more culture driven visit. Now, on a given day in Rome, in Paris, in London, we offer a choice of either dining experience or a visit to a gallery or a museum or a individual walking tour with the local specialist visiting the markets. So now we have definitely gone um, being a mass operator, quote unquote, into 
ensuring that our guests can personalize their experience. The five of us here we may not share the same liking for the classical. They may decide to go to Opera Garnier to hear to hear an opera operatic performance. Somebody else would like to take a bateau mouche and and, and enjoy enjoy the, the vistas of Paris from the river. So there's certainly a, a huge development in that respect. The other thing we're doing, we're launching an app and technology plays a very big role, I believe in the recovery and kind of uh, uh, formulation of our new normal. Our guests have their tablet or they have their phone. They have an app which enables them to communicate with the travel director, with the well-being director. And they also have a choice of different things they can do and they can kind of self-guide and they can really kind of personalize their experience. So I believe that the, that the development will be following personalized technology that is accessible at all time to the traveler with the choice of experiences on any given moment and with an opportunity to change traditional travel from more observatory into participatory, be it through walking experiences, experiences with uh, a smaller group and, and experiences that will uh, conform more to a personal taste. Thank you for this good explanation. And uh, lastly, Tara, how is, uh, for your company, how are the new products coming? Um, great. What so I think some of the trends that we're seeing for our demographic, which is millennials, millennial solo travelers. Um, one is definitely the sort of bucket list experience trips. We're seeing some of our longer, more expensive, more once in a lifetime trips selling out pretty, pretty easily, even into middle of next year. Um, one trend we're very interested in right now is how this sort of forced mass adaptation of remote work is going to impact the travel industry. Um, and we think that there's going to be a rise in longer trips that combine uh, remote work with travel and exploration. So whereas um, whereas before maybe, I mean, for Americans, it was it's pretty standard to take one or two weeks off and you just disconnect completely. But I think what we'll start to see is people bringing their laptops with them and going for a longer amount of time. Um, so maybe an hour uh, or um, uh, a month or two, um, but working remotely from wherever they are. So we think there's going to be a lot of opportunity in the type of products that cater to this market um, and an infrastructure that needs to be set up like solid Wi-Fi, um, places to plug in, um, bag storage, you know, whatever it may be. So that's something that was actually the impetus for us launching Sojourn, which is um, a, a series of themed one month trips that people join and it's largely self-guided, um, but they also still have a community of travelers that they're, they're in one place with. Um, so we think that will be an interesting trend to continue to watch, not necessarily this digital nomad lifestyle, but sort of a, a micro version of that where you go away for a month. Um, and then lastly, we're, we think that sustainability is going to move even more into the forefront of people's considerations when they're choosing companies to work with. Um, I think the pandemic has obviously shown a light on how interdependent we are, both as a global economy and a global ecosystem. And just like we all played a part in, in stopping the spread of COVID, we all need to play a part in maintaining both our, our nature and our biosphere and, um, and the the actual physical earth, but it's our local communities um, and our, our smaller ecosystems as well. well thank you very much. Uh, uh, okay, let Hans, I would like to ask you the cruise products. It's affected a lot during these days. Well, how you mm -hmm. see the future of these products? Yes, uh, business will come back, and I, I, I think we are uh, well positioned because, uh, in line with the, 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 the trend that we discussed earlier, so the, the over tourism and, and towards more remote areas, I think there will also be a trend from the the big, huge cruise ships to to, to the smaller ones, and uh, the smaller ones doing 
you know, not only doing uh, the uh, touristic hotspots, but going into the uh, the ends of this world. So um, uh, we are actually very positive, and we see also that our forward bookings. And now I'm talking about the end of 2021, uh, even 2022, are are really good. Uh, I think uh, next year is is uh, uh, going to take off. Uh, still a bit challenging. We uh, expect not to sail before the end of May. So then, then we have been a, a year around of uh, out of operations with our cruise ships, which is you know a long time. Uh, we expect to start up in May uh, and, and up until August September, still with a lot of uh, protocols because yes, vaccines will come, but vaccines will not be uh, completely implemented. So uh, the experience will be good, but different. Uh, think about uh, face masks on board, think about uh, social distancing, uh, uh, and also in the type of excursions, we, we probably need to avoid some of the, the really small communities, the vulnerable communities of, of this world. Um, and then I expect things to start normalizing at the end of 2021. So then I, I hope that we are, yeah, back on the old days, but in a new world, if, <laughs> if <Yeah>. that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I think it was, it was already started uh, before this period, the transformation of the exactly. digital and the products were also uh, in a, tr a transformation period. The only thing about uh, this uh, uh, COVID did is uh, it questioned the progress. Uh, and now everybody is thinking more serious about digitalization and also now uh, most of the agencies are thinking more seriously about concentrating on different segments and trying to create uh, new products and be uh, like a real uh, pro uh, uh, real travel agency not like a, a commissioner you know, um, because in Turkey we have some problems about this M most of the companies are product outpaced commission-based uh, travel agencies. But what I see here uh, from different parts of the world, you know your markets very well, and you know what to sell to your clients, and you have your plans for the future. So it shows that when you have, uh, you really know your market, uh, when you have those uh, know-how, then uh, it is easier for you to create new things uh, because you can, uh, Think uh, like uh, uh, from the side of the uh, client eyes. So uh, actually, my questions are finished. But um, is there anything you would like to add, uh, Tara? Uh, would you like to add anything? For example, <laughs> will you help me? Because I think we can. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, I would love to say thank you for having me. It's been great speaking with you all. Um, love hearing about all of the new products that everyone is working on and how you're approaching the future. It's definitely kind of uh, a new world that none of us are really quite sure what it's going to look like um, come next year, but I'm enthusiastic. I know our travelers are very enthusiastic to get back out there and actually see the world. Um, and so I'm, I'm looking forward to the future. Thank you very much. Rene, how about you? Would you like to add something? Well, thank you very much for the invitation. It was a pleasure. Mm -hmm. uh, I, re I really hope that we all can come back to a new normal, but I'm afraid it's going to be 2022. Right? Let's be honest about it. The next year is still going to be very, very rocky. And uh, Istanbul is on my wife's bucket list. So I, I have to do that too. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Oh, please come to Istanbul. We have uh, everything is going to be much better here. You know, Istanbul is getting uh, more uh, popular nowadays because of Turkish Airlines help. Uh, whenever you come, uh, be our guest, please. Uh, Wolf, how are you? Very much. Uh, this is how about you? I think you have. I I would like to yes I would like to uh, suggest one thing I think it would be very interesting for you and uh, Alex Abi and Gohan to create this exactly same panel next year yes so that we can share experiences of what we were discussing in 20 in December of 2020 relative to 21 and how 
has the new reality set into our worlds in respect to 2022? Uh, that's one point. The other point is, I believe that this new reality is really kind of expanding our world, uh, both internally. I mean, we're all suffering very unfortunately because of lack of business. But I believe this is the looking a little bit inward, finding the efficiencies, trying to perfect our programs. And also because the numbers are going to be smaller of people traveling, we're looking for collaboration. I think that one of the things that is super important in our industry is the level of collaboration between us. And for instance, Hans and I have met doing a panel at Tuzakrota and hopefully we'll be working together. Hans, I have the name of the person for you to get in touch with because clearly I have learned of Albatross cruising, which I was not aware of in the past, but this was a great opportunity to uh, really work with colleagues who one can collaborate with. And number three, I would like to say that this being my second uh, Uzakrota uh, online, online summit, I am delighted to have participated uh, for the second time. And uh, I certainly uh, concur with Rene. It'd be great to be in Istanbul next year. We are looking forward to see you here. Well, so, so, certainly like we do. May, may, may I say the may I say uh, Wolf's idea is, is very good. It's always good to have these comparative things. Yes. I even have I even have some experience. I've, I've, if I can share it with you, I've done one travel this year, and this was for my 50th birthday in the summer to Paris, and I celebrated my 18th birthday in Paris the same time uh, in, in the same city. And what I did is I took the old photos that I have, which are of course paper photos from my 18th birthday and took photos in the exact same location. Sure. But but even up to the stone, you know, to the to the tile on the Place Trocadero, I, I was searching for the same tile, same position. And then I took the took the photo and it was, a, it was amazing fun. Uh, so so uh, taking that idea for, to a panel, yes, uh, surely that's a, that, that, that's a, that's a great idea. Um, I think we will be, you know, we'll be looking back like maybe not a year from now, but let's say two or three years from now, we'll be looking back at some things in a bizarre way, you know, we'll, that they'll seem totally bizarre to us uh, compared to what, what we're doing now and what we will do then. But I, I have a takeaway from um, many of the panels that I've done during the day today is particularly from the hotel industry. This was very clear that they also picked up some good ideas from this pandemic and, and they, they see many opportunities in the way they're designing their product and in the way they want to carry it on. And one is sustainability. We will have to cater to the uh, greatest uh, of this world. You know, the young generation is coming. And while we are, while we are, you know, maybe not always thinking of the environment and saying, well, you know, that towel, the, 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 I'm not going to use it again. I want a new towel every day in the hotel. Well, Greta will not agree with that. She will say, "We want, you know, we want a, a sustainable hotel. I don't want any towels. I'm going to bring my own own t towel all the way from Sweden." Sorry for making a bit fun of her, but I, I think she deserves credit, and that's going to be on the topic on the on the table on of many many strategists. So, with these um, with these uh, synergistic remarks from uh, with takeaways from some other panels, I would like to thank uh, our panelists. It's the last panel of today, but. Uh, Actually, it's three o'clock in Europe right now, uh, in, in Western Europe, so I still feel fresh. You, yeah. in Istanbul, you in Istanbul, you deserve the break now <laughs> at the end of the day. So, Emre, thank you very much for leading us. Thank uh, you very much. Panel, very and uh, thank you, um, Tara, Hans, uh, Rene, and Wolf. Uh, great panel, as usual, having many different perspectives. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to seeing you in Istanbul live next year. Yes. Thank, so, you. thank you. Thank you very much. So, yeah. Thank you very much. For me, uh, thank you all.